Welcome to August Lico Challenge. Today's problem is longest uncommon subsequence 2. Given an array of strings stirs, return the length of the longest uncommon subsequence between them. If the longest uncommon subsequence does not exist, return negative 1. Now, an uncommon subsequence between an array of strings is a string that is a subsequence of one string, but not the others. So what does that mean? Okay, well, a subsequence of a string S is a string that can be obtained after deleting any number of characters from S. So for example, if ABC is our subsequence, we can check to see if it's a subsequence of this string here, AEBDC, and we can see that it is because A is right here, then B and C all in order. Um, so normally with this problem, if we were just to compare two strings together, uh, it's fairly easy actually. All we have to do is uh, check to see if they're the same. If they are, then we'll just return negative one. Otherwise, just return the length of the longest string. Like if this we had ABA and we had like ABAA, the longest subsequence between these two is just ABA, right? Because, or the longest uncommon subsequence, because this cannot be a um, subsequence of ABA. But that's not going to work here because we have multiple strings, right? Uh, so what we have to do then is kind of rethink our approach. And instead of uh, looking for the uncommon subsequence, what we can do is take the string here and check to see if it's a subsequence of all the other strings inside of our list. So what we'll do is check to see if, hey, is ABA a subsequence of CDC? Is it a subsequence of EAE? And if it's not, if it, we find that it's not a subsequence of all of them, then that's going to be one of the uncommon subsequences, right? And what we can do then is sort our list in descending length. And the first time that we find a word that's not a subsequence of all the other words, we turn the length of that. And that's going to be our longest uncommon subsequence. All right, so let's first write a helper method. And this is going to tell us whether it's a subsequence or not. So is subsequence. And we'll enter in the subsequence that we want to check as well as our target word. Um, so the first thing, if length of s is greater than length of t, then immediately we can say, hey, this is not a subsequence, so just return a false. Um, what we'll do is also have an iterator here. And let's see, for uh, character in s, what we'll do I guess what we'll do is check to see if this character is equal to uh, our t here. Wait, um, okay, I think I got this wrong. We're going to check every t. We're going to check every character inside of our target. And if target character is equal to our s of i, then we'll increase our i here. And just do that for every character. And at the very end, if we find that i is equal to the length of s, then that means this is a subsequence, right? Yeah, so I believe that's correct. Next, all we have to do then is a nested for loop. And first, let's sort our strings here. We'll say string sort, uh, let's see, key equals lambda. And we want to do this in descending length, so negative length of oh, x negative length of x, like this. Say so for, uh, let's see, i word in enumerates strings. And we'll have to say for j in range of length of strings. Uh, so if i does not equal j, because we don't want to check itself, uh, we'll say if Let's see, is subsequence of word, that's going to be our subsequence sequence that we're checking, and our target, which is strs j. And the thing is, we want to see, check to make sure that it's all not, right? So uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a variable here. We'll say found, let's start with true. If we find a subsequence, then, then we have to set our found to equal false, and we'll break our loop. And at the, here, after we're done with checking all the uh, different numbers, if found, then we just return the length of the word that we're checking. 
Otherwise, if we can't find anything, then we have to return negative one because none of them worked. All right, so let's make sure this works here. Okay, that returns a three, so submit that. Oop, okay. String looks out of range. Oh, all right. Um, see if, see, and I guess I needs to be late, less than the length of S. Let's try that again. All right, there we go, accepted. Uh, so time complexity here is going to definitely be n, at least n squared. I believe it's going to be n squared, n to the power of 2 times k, k being the average length of the words inside our strings. And space complexity would be the same, I believe, because of our curvature here. Mm, actually, space complexity might be might be... Space complexity might be constant. I, yeah, space complexity is just constant. So that's, that's good. All right, so this question, I, I think, you know, to start off, I felt like it should be easy, but as I started to solve it, uh, started, it, it started to feel more and more like a hard. It wasn't until I saw some of the solutions that I finally understood, like, what the problem statement actually was. Uh, it was really confusing. Uh, I, I think they need to word this a little bit better because... It's really easy to kind of go down wrong paths here. But that's it. Uh, hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing. <laughs>